Hey y'all, what's up and welcome to my channel. Today, we are talking about how to reinvent yourself from the outside in. Yes, I said from the outside in because that is how I recommend you reinvent yourself. This advice comes from a culmination of all of that and working with over a thousand clients in the last seven years. What I've noticed is that while it sounds good to say reinvent yourself, start from the inside, work on the inside first, it's often a longer route than going the opposite way, which is working on the outside and then seeing the result or the trickle effect on the inside. So today we're gonna talk a little bit about what that looks like. So let's go ahead and get into it, okay? So the first reason why I recommend going from the outside in is because outside perspective of self creates an immediate internal shift, okay? When you do something that changes the outside visual of yourself, your internal perspective almost immediately shifts. For example, if you go cut your hair, that's an outside uh, decision that you've made, it's something outside of you, and the inside, you are immediately looking at yourself different. Whether you went and got that haircut on purpose and you're now looking at yourself like, ooh, I can do anything, I am a prowess, or you maybe uh, had your hair cut short by accident and it was just a bad day at the salon and now you have this short hair that you didn't intend to have and your entire perspective of yourself is like, oh my gosh, I hate myself, like because of the outside. And so instead of us taking the normal perspective that everybody has and being like, that's so shallow and like it's on the outside and out, like, it doesn't matter if you think it's shallow or not, it is what it is. If something happens on the outside and it changes us, the shift on the inside is immediate, okay? So haircut, weight loss, changing your hair color sometimes, changing your wardrobe, the things that you wear, anything that is visual from an outside perspective causes an immediate internal shift. The second reason why when you're reinventing yourself you should go from the outside in is because external commitments create internal motivation or what we call in neuro-linguistic programming, intrinsic motivation. So I'm certified in NLP, which stands for neuro-linguistic programming. It's the study of how uh, the brain interprets success and patterns and fears and like all of those things, right? That contribute into who you are as a decision maker. In NLP, we talk about extrinsic versus intrinsic motivation. Extrinsic motivation is when you are motivated by outside factors, things that are outside of you. Intrinsic motivation is when you are motivated from something that comes with inside of you, right? internal motivation and external motivation are going to give you the same boost like if we're talking about energy levels you'll get the same boost from both but internal motivation is more lasting so if like i'm motivated to let's just say for example if i'm motivated to get my master's degree because my mom wants me to get my master's degree that's external motivation i may be motivated when i enroll but it doesn't mean i'm going to be motivated the entire time i'm working through that program but if i decide i want to get my master's degree and it's something that i want to do for me i'm a lot more likely to stay motivated for a longer period of time so while both extrinsic and intrinsic motivation are good to utilize when you are trying to achieve something intrinsic motivation is going to last a little bit longer when it comes to reinventing yourself from the outside in, when you make an outside commitment, you have more internal or intrinsic motivation. So for example, if I go to the gym and I sign up to go to the gym and I give them my money, I have now made an external communication. I know that I've committed to this, but the person I signed up with also knows that I committed to this and whoever else I told my friends, my parents, whoever, they all know that I'm committed to this. And so because I've made this external commitment, I now have this intrinsic motivation to keep it up, like to keep doing it, right? Now, if you don't really care about what other people think, then the external commitment involving another person is not gonna work for you. You're gonna have to make a different type of external commitment. Um, another example of external commitments would be like joining an accountability group. I run accountability groups for that specific reason. People tend to get better results when they're in a group because they're in a group, right? It's psychology, that's why I run group programs. Um, other external commitments, when you buy something, I bought a Peloton, it's sitting right here off in the corner. 
the only reason why I get on it is because I bought it. Like, I mean, I, I'm healthy. I like to stay healthy. I'm romanticizing my healthy lifestyle and fitness journey because that's a very large part of what I do for a living. But if I would not have purchased this Peloton, I would not have been intrinsically motivated to get on it. Like, I'm not going to go to you know, someone else's gym and get on the Peloton. Cause y'all know Pelotons are everywhere. You can go to a hotel and get on a Peloton. I talked to my partner about this earlier. I'm not gonna, I wasn't gonna do it, but buying it was me making a external commitment. And then I started getting on it, okay? So um, it works also with goal setting, like accountability partners, like I said, just little things like that. And so when you're reinventing yourself from the outside in, if you can find, some external commitment, whether that's a group or making a purchase that requires you to show up or even hiring a coach, because that's an external commitment because that coach knows, and I'm a coach, I know, like if I see you falling off the ball or if I haven't heard from you in a few days, I'm sending you a text message or I'm sending you an email like, hey, what you doing? So it keeps up the in in intrinsic motivation. Last but not least, the third thing, the third reason why reinventing yourself from the outside in is going to be the best way to change yourself and shift your identity before next year is the releasing a stored energy. There's a book called The Body Keeps Count. And in that book, the author describes how when you are going through things like stress, trauma, anxiety, your body is pinning up those emotions. We know this to be true based off of research and you probably know it to be true and, and have never thought about it before, but think about it. When you get anxiety, you, your heart, heart rate elevates. Your palms may get sweaty. You may have shaky hands. Like what you're thinking and what you're feeling is firing off synapses in your brain and it's physically coming out in your body. So what happens when you hold on to a lot of emotions or you've been going through a lot of emotions and you're not doing physical movement up to the same part of the emotions that you've been going through is you start to feel tense. Your shoulders are tense, your back is tense, your posture is different. This is why people have to go get massages. This is why people go to acupuncturists. Like for this very reason, because the emotions are stored up in the body. In the spiritual sense, if you notice, if you look through the, throughout the Bible, you will notice that a lot of times before God speaks to someone, they're doing some large amount of physical activity. I don't know if y'all ever noticed this, but I do a lot of Bible studies, so I noticed they're doing a large amount of physical activity, like walking up a mountain, walking through a desert, walking around a, a large building, you know, things like that, running, like literally they're doing physical activity. I think that's intentional. God is saying, I need you to release all of your emotions and all of your human preconceptions. And then I need you to get to a, a place where you have exhaled everything and now you can inhale me. And so when we're talking about reinventing ourselves from the outside in, specifically talking to Christian women right now, because that's mostly what my channel is about anyways, specifically talking to you, physical activity is not just about losing weight. It's not just about you having a big, big old butt and, you know, no stomach. It's not just about gut health, although these are all great side effects of physical activity. Physical activity is for you to release all of the emotions and all of the thoughts that you're having so that when you do your prayer time, when you do your Bible study, when you have your conversations with God, which a lot of people will take walks in the morning and have their conversations with God while they're taking those walks, you're actually open to hear what God has to say because you're not pinned up with all of these emotions because anxiety fear and doubt. Those are all the emotions that the body keeps count of. Those are the emotions that are stopping you from doing what he's calling you to do. And so I'm saying reinvent yourself and shift your identity, which you are, but you are being made new. And that's literally what it says in the Bible. It's like you are being made new. There are a lot of transformations that take place in the Bible. Abram to Abraham, Sarah to Sarah, Saul to, I mean, yeah, Saul to Paul like all of these transformations where people are being shifted and renamed and reborn. And it's something that for a lot of Christian women, 
we've lived our lives so long being who the world told us that we should be. And then we have this awakening. And when you have this awakening and you realize, oh, wow, this is what God has called me to do. You can't just walk straight into that. You have to go through a pruning season. You have to go through a renewal. You have to go through a fully, a full stripping of everything. And then you have to come into a building yourself back up. And that involves reinventing yourself. And it's not just inside out, it's outside in too, baby. And it's, it, and I suggest going outside in first because it's going to be a more effective use of your time. In my opinion, right? So I just wanted to share that with y'all today because listen, we are going into the last 90 days of this year. I don't know, it may be 2025 when y'all are watching this video. Listen, boo, it's never too late, okay? It's never too late to reinvent yourself. It's never too late to be made new. If you know that you are in desperate need and you are hungry for God's word and to walk into a new season, these three things that I told you today are actionable steps that you can take and go out in the world and say, you know what? I'm not just going to wait for my inside to somehow miraculously start being confident or I'm not going to wait for my inside to somehow miraculously go, you know, to be better. I'm going to start taking steps from the outside, doing things that I have control over that I can control because everything on this list I told you today intentionally these are all things all three of these things are things that you can control in order to start this renewal process become someone new and step into who god is calling you to be all right that is all i have for y'all today if you're interested in a free discovery call session because you are wanting to work with me as your coach just look in the description box below and there will be a link for you to learn more about what that looks like to have me as your external accountability partner or your external commitment. I hope to see y'all in the next video. Bye y'all.